but this this highlights the funny thing about people who complain about being offended by media. It's only the stuff that they find offensive that they want banned. If it's something that other people might find offensive, but whose um, perspectives they don't necessarily agree with, then they will just say something like, oh, it's just entertainment, you're taking it too seriously. Fuck you. Quite frankly, fuck you. It's completely insane. It demonstrates the utter hypocrisy of that position. It's something Channel 4 did brilliantly, actually. About a decade ago, Channel 4 did the band season, where they explored all of the movies and TV series that had caused a stir, that had been a band or that which were considered offensive. And they not only interviewed people, those, you know that, that particular tribe of whingers who probably sit in front of the TV every evening with a notepad and pen, flicking through the channels, looking for something to be offended by. Um, they not only interviewed them, but after they'd finished explaining what particular shows or clips they were particularly offended by, the sh they showed the clips and the shows. Brilliant. Well done, Channel 4. Very, very well done indeed. And they even went out of their way to highlight the hypocrisy of that position. They were asking the current leader of the, the group that Mary Whitehouse set up, that sort of fundamentalist Christian group of lunatics who want everything banned, basically, except the Bible... Um, and he was, they, they showed him a, a, a an image of, um, black and white minstrels, you know, blacked up white people, uh, presenting stereotypical portrayals of black people. And he was like, well, oh, that's all right. That's just entertainment. So basically what he's saying is that something that's not culturally offensive to him is fine. But some, if it causes offense to other people, then it's not, it's not a problem. If it causes, but if it causes offence to him, then it is, and he wants it banned. This is the fundamental hypocrisy of these people, and particularly the ones who come from a biblical or religious background. I mean, the Bible has so much that's offensive in it to so many people. It contains inherent judgments upon very particular lifestyles and, and perspectives and ways of being. I, I as a, a man in a gay relationship, I'm an abomination, and unclean and so on and so forth i should find that offensive and I, I do to a certain degree but it's just in a book you know it's just it's not something you have to to take literally or anything to that effect it's the it's the behavior it influences uh, people's reactions to it that are dangerous and offensive but here is the fundamental problem they will talk about violence they will talk about sex and rape and whatnot but they will not apply the same standards to something they hold sacred um, the, the Bible contains, particularly the Old Testament, countless examples of genocide, of um, rape, of murder, human sacrifice, slaughter of innocents, so on and so forth, but they will not apply those standards to it. They will condemn other media for containing these things. Even when they don't actively promote them, as the Bible does, in a, a countless instances, you know, it's God who orders Moses to slaughter the Midianites. And it's God who orders the Hebrews to slit open the women and to bash the brains of children against rocks. It's just incredible. It is utterly utterly incredible the double standards of these people you either allow for offense or you don't and if you don't allow for offense then technically there shouldn't be any media at all because everything will be offensive to some people in some way shape or form insofar as i'm concerned the only media that should be scrutinised with an eye towards perhaps censoring or banning it is that which causes harm as a result of its production. So, for example, um, I, I, the obvious example is child pornography. There is an obvious harm caused by its production to those involved. Um, and therefore, it evidently shouldn't be allowed to happen because there is harm being caused. Furthermore, I would ask what qualities give uh, any human being or group of human beings or institution the right to define what other human beings can say or be exposed to 
What qualities? How do you determine who is right in that role? There is not a human being alive who has the right to exercise that kind of influence. You cannot tell me how I can express myself, what I can talk about, or how I can talk about it. If I want to write a poem, uh, a homoerotic poem based on the crucifixion, that's my prerogative. You just don't have to read it. That's the thing. No one will be forcing you to. If I want to write a poem about um, a dream of transcendence in which I have an erotic encounter with the resurrected Jesus or Muhammad or whatever, my prerogative. Again, it will have significance for particular audiences. It will, if you feel you would be offended by it, then don't fucking pick up the book. Don't fucking read it. This is what it ultimately comes down to. Those people who want items banned that offend them want everyone else to take responsibility for their offence. Ultimately, people choose to be offended. They choose to... Um... take the, uh, in the significance of media, particular mediums, um, in a negative manner. The raw fact of the matter is, even if a piece of work conflicts wildly with what you believe, you can get something positive out of it. For example, I love the Bible. I think the Bible is a beautiful book. Absolutely stunning. I particularly like Revelations. I think Revelations is just... It has some of the best surreal, um, transcendental, metaphysic imagery I've ever come across in mythology. In fact, Revelations is one of the books that marks the Bible out for me as something very special, mythologically speaking. Uh, the same is true of some of the images in the Quran. Um, but there are things within the Bible that are hideous as well. There are things within the Quran that are also hideous. Uh, morally speaking, some of its, its uh, behavioural tenets are repulsive. But that doesn't matter, because I'm a human being, I have a critical faculty, I have the ability to assess those elements that are worthwhile to me and those which are not, and to put aside those which are not, or to ignore them, and to take what I can or want from those that have meaning or worth. This is the point. Choosing to be offended and to wallow in that offence, rather than using it as a means for redefining one's own intellectual, moral, ideological or philosophical parameters, um, is an intellectual sin, if you like. It is a, a conscious and deliberate act of self-inflation and self-importance. And it also demonstrates, ironically, just how weak your position actually is. If it cannot even withstand something to exist that, stand, that uh, flies in the face of it, that challenges it, that criticises it, then it cannot be a position worth holding, can it? 